One, two, three, four, let's go. It's hardly. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. I hardly Alaska. It's hardly. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Genie's show. everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you for joining me. Today we travel to Kodiak Island to the village of Akiak and this is a part one of a two-part series. It's really neat. We walk through Akiak, Alaska and listen to the stories of Florence Pesterkoff as she gives us a tour of that village. Don't go away. It's one of those neat, neat shows. This program was made possible by Coeric Incorporated. Thank you, Coeric, for your generous support. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is also sponsored by the Norton Sound Economic Development Corporation serving the fisheries of the Bering Strait region. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. This program is also brought to you by ASRC Energy Services, a subsidiary of Arctic Slope Regional Corporation. Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. Welcome back. Akiak, Alaska. A village rich with the Aludic heritage and the villagers are working hard to keep it that way through Aludic Cultural Week. Florence Pesterkoff tells us how life in Akiak, Alaska used to be. There's a place some call remote. A place far away, hard to get to. An unlikely spot for heaven on earth. It's a place where the secrets of the Ancient Ones are revealed with every new dawn. Akiak. Located at the southern end of Kodiak Island at Alatak Bay sits the Aleutic community of Akiak. Originally a sea otter hunting site, Akiak is now home for a little over 50 people who live off the land and waters that surround them. Florence Pesterkoff was born in Akiak in 1937 and moved to Old Harbor at the age of 14. We caught up with Florence and archaeologist Sven Hawkinson Jr. of Old Harbor as they took us on a walk through the village of Akiak. The village has changed a lot since uh, 1951. Uh, in 1965 is when the BIA brought some of the older houses in. Were most of the houses destroyed after the tidal wave? The, no, they weren't affected by the tidal wave. No? 
No, there was just some uh, tidal action uh -huh. out here, but nothing was destroyed. Uh -huh. So it was mainly in the north end and uh -huh. Old Harbor area. Old Harbor. In the uh -huh. I will, I'll show you as we go where the furthest house was on this end. Mm -hmm. See, there were no houses in the back here. Stop here, you can tell us whose houses are whose. Yeah, I was going to say, right about where that house is. In, actually, between those two houses there, the white house, those two houses on the end there, that was the end of Akiak, going down that way. And where the airport is, there was a lake that we used to skate on. You can see just a little bit of it. This road wasn't here at all. Like I said, there was nothing back here. And so these are on 65s and these houses here? Uh-huh, these are the older, that's the BIA houses. Yeah, there were some houses right here, very few. Just a very few, How many maybe about lived, three. Lived here? What I remember, that must have been about 96 to, uh, to 100 back then. See, this is the one of the roads that was here, original road. There was a house right here, which was the church reader's house, Simeon Egnat. Mm -hmm. Simeon and his two sons lived in that house. And right here was the Phillips house, because they were right, and Nicolokli's house was about right, right where the road is now. And this, this hill, when I was little, it looked so high, I don't know if it sunk any or, or what since the tidal wave. Have you taken a picture of that log house yet? No. That's, a origi that's an original for Akiak. Uh -huh. There was a big Arctic entry here. You could see how big it was. Uh-huh, big Sinak. See, see? See how big it is, almost as big as the house? I'll go that way. There's uh, the kitchen cabinets, homemade cabinets are still there. Look at that, huh? Look at how many coats of paint. Yeah, all <laughs> the years. Look at how low the, our ceilings used to be. Very low. That would to conserve heat. My dad always said that uh, six foot seven was a good height because he was tall. <laughs> People used to split salmon right near that creek there. You see it? Oh, look at the ducks. That's neat. What are those butter balls? And my, my grandpa's house was right, right there, right next to the. What was your grandpa's name? Wanka. Wanka. Moses Nomov. Do you remember him at all? Well, I remember Wanka. I never That's him. Him. Okay. <laughs> That's him. Okay. That's the only Wanka. <laughs> he was my mom's dad. Well, look at these skiffs now, huh? all aluminum. This right here was the schoolhouse. It was a two-story, two-story. Uh, there was a teacherage right next to it where the teachers lived, uh -huh. and a big storeroom. It looked big to me then. Probably was. 
Okay, this was this was the road. There there wasn't yeah, there was a road only as far as, there were two houses right there. The Farsovich brothers had homes there. But this was where our house stood, my, my mom and dad's house, right here. This was our, our living room, right here. You can see how small it was. You know what? This was a kitchen. Now that I look over here, yesterday I was so emo uh, day before yesterday I was so emotional. It kind of got twisted around a little bit. This was the kitchen right here, looking at the, the edges there. And that was our living room right here. And my bedroom was right there. And then there was, there was my uncle's house right, right down there. Uh -huh. And uh, we had a, a banya right over there. And that was the, the Czechsluak, uh, a barabra, right there where you see the tin. I remember it being covered with sod. Mm -hmm. And then we had a chicken coop right on the side of it. The road is all covered up. My dad used to carry blocks of firewood from down the bank. And we had our outhouse down that way. In fact, we found a hole. <laughs> and we had a, a, a chute that would carry our garbage down to the beach. It was the coils and I, uh, dad, Let's use it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This is where our banya stood, right here. And my dad had a windmill on top of the chikluak to uh, charge the batteries. I remember we had one light bulb he hooked up, he rigged up one bare light bulb. That, that we thought was so neat. And eventually he did get a generator and the generator house was over there. And we had vegetable gardens that they would plant in the spring before we went to the uh, cannery. First it was Al Attack and then after a while it was Mosier Bay. And uh, we'd come, come back here to check the gardens. Yeah. And when the, once we came back, we didn't have any more chickens. I guess the dogs got them. <laughs> I remember reindeer hanging off the ceiling. And, uh, reindeer used to migrate from Carmel to this area. Originally, I think it was a, a home, you know, a place that they lived, because I do remember a tunnel somewhere in here, a short tunnel going to the to another area. Yeah. So it must have been a dwelling. Uh, the wonder, the beautiful thing about this is, if you look at all the wood here, um, for us, for as an archaeologist, we never get to see this type of structure because this is all hand-hewn logs. Um, hand-hewn uh, red cedar planks, uh, most like your grandfather probably did that. Um, and it's the last standing chick book, which isn't standing very really anymore. About three, in the last three years it's collapsed. Um, it'd be nice if the community decided that they would restore it because of its uh, historic value, but it's up to them. Just, I was so excited about seeing this and remembering Larry talking about this that I came and I photographed everything, all the corners, even even this stuff, even though it's more recent. Uh, but this stuff is the most important here for for information and traditional chick silk. Yeah, we used to carry water from that well down there. We can just walk down, huh? The school had a pump. 
for their water, for their, to get their water. We had to carry ours. <laughs> you guys were talking about the yokes? What did those look oh, like? Oh, they're just shaped to fit your shoulders. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right on top here, you would balance your buckets. Yeah, we used to carry a lot of water. Uh -huh. Not as much as we should have, maybe. But, I mean, for a wash day, especially in Banya. And just look at how far it was to carry the water from. I dreamt about coming back. Really, when I slept, I dreamt about it. And I'm glad to have come back to my childhood place. I'm waiting because I don't want to get a disease. I have a future ahead of me, and I don't want to mess up my life. If my husband asks me if he's the first, I want to say yes. Yes. Because I respect myself. I have so much going for me. A child would only slow me down. I'm trying to break a cycle. Sex is a very special thing I only want to share with one person. There are too many consequences. Consequences. STDs. The union between two people. I would always regret it. I'm protecting my heart. Waiting doesn't make you less of a man. I'm waiting because it's the most precious gift I can give. Good morning, Island Air. Island Air has been serving Kodiak Island for over 20 years. With scheduled service and charter service to six different destinations around Kodiak Island, the mainland, peninsula, and up and down the Aleutian chain, Island Air offers quality service at affordable rates. And if you love to fish, Island Air would love to take you there. They offer same-day fly-in fishing and bear viewing trips. So when you find yourself on Kodiak Island, be sure to visit Island Air for your island travels. Hi, I'm Martha Keegan, and welcome to Nylon Suite. Heartbeat Alaska wishes to thank Martha and the whole Keegan family. We'd like you to make this your home away from home. She made sure we were very comfortable during our stay on Kodiak. I like meeting the people that come through, and I love showing people around. With a full kitchen and laundry facilities in the room, staying at an island suite can save you time and money. And the complimentary coffee is not bad either. An island suite, your home away from home. By the way, if you'd like us to visit your village, simply give me a call. Ask for Jeannie Green personally, won't you? 907-563-7440. We love to hear from you. Tekin Simeonov is a local guy who left and came back home. He came back home with a purpose, with a mission, and that is to teach his people the old ways. Akiak may be a small village, just over 50 people. But the heart and soul of these eluded people beats louder than life itself. The pride of the people who call this place home can be seen in everyday life. From the caring and sharing that has been tradition since the beginning of time, to the dedication of the youth who are keeping the drum of an ancient culture beating stronger than ever. The people of Akiak are leading their own into the future, knowing exactly who they are. Like in most schools across the country, the students here are taught the ways of Western society and survival in the outside world. But for one week a year in February, the youth combine their heritage with their academics during Akiok's annual Aludic Week celebration. Oh man, this is great. Once a year, 
time experience it is wonderful. I mean, it really shows us that we didn't know much about our ancestors way back in the day, so we all sit down with our elders, get together, and they really tell us a lot about our past history and our ancestors, how they used to live back in their day, how they used to hunt, get their food, fish, dance traditionally with their masks here, and uh, get into just getting with the whole family members and relatives and people from outside sharing their stories. Um, I mean, it's just a great experience anybody could ever have. I mean, this, this is great to me. I love Alutic Week every year. I look forward to this week every year. Alutic Week is more than a series of workshops and hands-on events. It's a time for the people to look inside themselves and learn more about their culture and their past. There are a variety of things to do during Aludic Week, one of which is to create your own hat. But it's more than just carving and bending. It's learning as well. Tikhan Simeonov was raised in the village, but currently lives in Old Harbor, about 40 miles north of Akiok. An excellent carver and woodworker, Tikhan is spending his time teaching the youth of Akiok how to make their own bent wood hats. It's an age-old tradition that Tikan learned from his elders and was kind enough to share with the rest of us. These are crooked knives. This is a standard bend uh, knife. It's pretty flat at the base and it comes up to a sharp bend. This is a, a deep bend knife. Uh, it's not very flat at the base, but it comes up to a big bend. It's good for uh, making masks or uh, I like these best to carve. So basically when they first start out, is I look at the wood and uh, find its natural bending side and then carve the, the inside of that. When you carve the inside, it will make it bend more easier. If you leave the outside flat, and um, makes it want to bend naturally. Another type of hat is the two-piece visor. It comes in two pieces and you fit them together. And, and it's, and it, this one's longer so it would be for a more ex experienced hunter. Um, pop, poplar is uh, kind of my favorite type of wood to bend. Uh, it's pretty easy to carve, pretty easy to bend. Um, the pine is uh, easier to carve but harder to bend. Um, bend wood hunting hat, the, the more decorative the, the hunting hat, the more experienced you will as a hunter. Um, the, the spirit of the animal you're hunting, you want to incorporate it into whatever you're uh, onto your hat. So normally on the uh, top part of the hat right here, they carve a little figurine to um, uh, attract the spirit of that animal you're, you're hunting. And the whiskers, uh, normally they use either baleen or uh, sea lion whiskers and they decorate that up as much as possible put feathers or beads um, the more lines you have um, usually uh, the different types of lines they have tells the story of, of uh, their different hunts they've been on uh, the more lines you have the more experience um, you see a space here that uh, leaves more uh, room to uh, paint more lines as you get more experience. Okay. Basically, wear a hat like this. You want the string to go behind the ear, right on the um, soft part of the skin going down. that will hold the hat. Uh, up the heavy part up the heaviest part is on the front uh, they should be holding up 
And you can see uh, the longer the hat, uh, the more shade you'll have on, from the glare, the water as you're kayaking. And the more shade you have, you can see the uh, animal better. And they are pretty clumsy if you're not, you don't know what you're doing. You're banging around a lot. So they decorate you with uh, tr uh, trade beads, uh, whiskers, feathers, ivory, uh, ivory figurines. The more experience you get, the more elaborate the, the hat will get. Throughout the week, these youth will make their own Bentwood hats with the guidance of Tikhon Simeonov. For many of these young people, it's a skill that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. The same skill that has brought Tikhon to this point in his life, where he has become the teacher of future teachers. It's a value that has forever linked the generations of Akiak together. Thank you everyone for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska. Remember, if you want us to visit your village and do a story on your way of life, please give us a call. Ask for Jeannie Green at 907-563-7440. God bless every single one of you and join me again next week for Akiak Alaska, part two. To purchase a copy of this program, have your credit card ready and call area code 907-563-7440.